Evening, guys. It's Richard with the Rich Perspectives Podcast, and I'm coming to you live from Chateau uh, Durango. That's right. I'm coming from my vehicle. I was at my parents' house earlier shooting some things from the basement, and we actually had to pack up and leave because the kids have school in the morning. It's getting late. So we're sitting out in my driveway where it's nice and quiet and warm by the way but uh tonight's podcast topic is the ip syndrome the ip syndrome ip syndrome this is something that's important to me because it's something that i actually contended with myself um it was oh, hold on my wife is bringing me some tea thank you babe sorry <laughs> but um it's something that's important to me because it's something that I contended with myself. Uh, the Ip syndrome, you know, it comes from things like divorce, debt, and pride. That's what it was for me, divorce, debt, and pride. Uh, most people who know me know that I've been married before. I got married uh, at a very young age, a haunted little teenager, and uh, it did not last. And the emotional instability, I guess I should say, uh, was what led me into the Ip syndrome, having to contend and battle that disease, essentially. Um, debt and pride. So for me, it's DDP, divorce, debt, and pride. It, the Ip syndrome, the symptoms are night sweats, I mean, nightmares. You're sweating when it's 30 below outside, you're nervous. You're upset, you're embarrassed. There's so many things that comes with suffering from the Ip syndrome. There is a cure. And the cure is to handle your business. Deal with the real and handle things according to the situation that really is at hand. So let's jump right into it. The Ip syndrome, the I in Ip stands for image. And the P stands for perception, image and perception, the image and perception syndrome. So many people suffer from that, especially these millennial nowadays. Um, so we're going to start with myself. No better place than to start with myself and live in my own truth. I'm glad to say that it is something that I overcome, that I have overcame, I'm sorry, and I beat that thing. I no longer suffer from the Ip syndrome, but let's jump right into it. So, uh, back in 2008, nine ish, I entered a divorce going through a very, uh, traumatic experience for myself. Um, uh, my first marriage was over and there was a lot of, uh, reckless, Ness, we'll say that a lot of recklessness on my account and had nothing to do with the relationship. It was the aftermath and the after effects of the relationship, what I did and going through a divorce. I was emotionally unstable and most men don't know how to channel their emotions anywhere in the first place. They don't know how to talk about things. They're unwilling to get somebody to sit down with and just get some things up off of them, get it off their chest. So one of the things that I began doing was I started spending, started spending a lot of money. Um, and I would do things like take the mortgage payment and redo the house. Like, you know, when my ex-wife left, I wanted to get rid of her, the thoughts, the memories. And, you know, so like maybe we had a room that was painted a certain color she wanted you know i got to paint that room i don't want that there no more you know snatching down all the pictures and you know putting down new stuff you know trying to basically exterminate the <laughs> house you know from her so in doing that i re I, rem I remember i remodeled my kitchen uh i redid the uh bathroom the dining room and uh, I refurnished the uh, living room and I bought some new TVs and everything. And so I remember getting the phone call from the bank saying that uh, they wanted to take my house and the house had essentially entered foreclosure and they were coming to my house to take pictures of the house to list it and what saved me and my house was that they were paving my street 
and they could not get to the property that day. God is good. He's a wonder in my soul. But um, it's funny because I had to sit back and think to myself, the money that I was using for the remodel was my mortgage. I had the money to pay the mortgage, but I was so busy trying to rid myself of her and to make myself feel better with things and possessions and make myself appear better than what I actually was to the people. That image, had to maintain an image. Most people are so comfortable and content with their image as long as they look good and people think that they are doing good, then it's all good with them. Couldn't be further from the truth. You know, people are literally crying themselves to sleep at night, committing suicide even because of the IP syndrome when it's something that's essentially not even contagious and no one can give it to you. No one can expose you to it. It's something that you literally inhabit on your own. And because it's of your own inhabitation, you can get rid of it whenever you get ready. So that image and perception, um, pride, you know, so many people, it's like my appearance, you know, I have a certain, uh, reputation I have to keep up, you know, or that's just beneath me. Or man, do you know who I am? You know, people live in that truth and it's not true, but people live in that truth and it's just not their reality. Deal with the real. Deal with the absolute real and handle these things and get past it. I tell people all the time, you have to rid yourself of the IP syndrome, especially if you're aspiring to start a business. So I had an individual, this was about three years ago, I had an individual come to me. Uh, they reached out to me on social media and asked me if I would be willing to coach them in business, you know? So they have been following me for years and like what I have done with my vision and the way I executed things and, you know, essentially brought some things into fruition. A lot of people don't know the story. They just see the, you know, after effects or the, or the products. But, um, so I obliged. I said, sure, you know, we'll set something up. So we got on the book and I locked them in, set up an appointment. And, um, so before I relocated my academy, my parking lot had these huge windows in the front and my parking lot was kind of long and so i could see people approaching the academy before they even turn in because of the big huge windows and the long parking lot and so as i'm sitting there and i'm waiting on the individual to get there for their session and i'm looking out the window and i see the cars rolling by and so i see this nice i mean it's just this shiny beautiful vehicle roll up i mean with some of the biggest wheels on it i've ever seen in my life and they pull up and they turn in my parking lot so i'm like mm, who's, who's this and the door open individual gets out and it's my client the one that was coming in for the consultation so they come in and um i started out just like i always start hey you know so uh why are you here help me help you and that's when the story began. They began to share with me, you know, they had been in the industry, the same industry that I that I'm in, and they had an opportunity to open um, uh, a, a, a shop, uh, and it was uh, in uh, a certain area of town that was like really booming, uh, foot traffic, uh, like we're talking like twenty thousand cars a day, you know, riding by, but. The thing about it is the beauty of the matter was the owner of the property had offered them this insanely deep discount because the owner actually believed in them as well. They wanted to see them prosper, wanted to see them make their vision come to pass essentially. So they gave them a great deal. I mean, it was a steal of a deal. So I said, okay, well, great. This is like a good problem to have, you know, well then what is the problem? You know, what, what, what what's going on? And they said to me, well, I don't have the money to do it. And so I'm like, wow. And so I said, well, what's, what's, what's going on? You know, where's your money going to? Because we got to get down to the bottom of this thing. So 
what I did, we started out in the space that was available to them in this prime location was about $700 a month. And uh, 700 personal dollars, depending on who you're talking to, may be a lot of money. 700 commercial dollars, that's not a lot of money whatsoever. So we started running the numbers, running the numbers, and they just did not have the extra funds to make this vision happen. And so everywhere we turn, I'm throwing out examples, giving suggestions, ideas, concepts, and they're shutting down there. No, that's not going to work. No, that's not going to do it. Been there, done that, tried that, didn't work, whatever. So I said, wow, this is, this is tough. So I got up, I got from my desk, and I walked to the window, and I looked outside and I said, that is a nice car you have. Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's my baby right there. I've been wanting that car for so long. I had to go and get it when I seen it. I said, that's nice. How much your car payment is? And they told me car payments, I think, was four fifty four a month. That's some change, something like that. So we just say four fifty. So okay. Um, how much your insurance? Oh man, you know, my insurance kind of high. I got a lot of tickets. And that's actually considered to be a sports car because of the engine. So my insurance is like two two twenty a month. I was like, okay. So we're talking, you know, four fifty four and two twenty and some change. So we just say, you know, six seventy five a month, you know, car insurance, you know. So then you got your like your gas, you know, your maintenance, taxes, insurance, you know, all the other stuff. Um uh, I said, uh Hey man. Your business outside of my parking lot. Right. They looked at me just like that. Didn't get what I was saying. And I said, uh, your business is outside of my parking lot. I was like, what do you mean? I said, that car, when you get it? Oh, I just got it like, like two months ago. I said, um, that is nice. Those wheels. Those wheels come on the car? Oh, nah, I went and got those put on there. I said, really? Yeah. How much was the wheels? Well, see, they set me up on a plan to where I can pay for them um, by the week. So it's like you pay as you go. Well, how much is those? Wheels, 200 bucks a month. I said, wow. I said, okay, I need you to do me a favor. And uh, if you've been watching these past few podcasts or listening, I always have a challenge at the end of my podcast. And I, so I always have challenges at the end of my sessions as well. I said, I need you to do me a favor. I can help you. And I know we can bring this vision to pass for you to secure this facility and get your business started. They perked up, excited. Yes, I'm ready to go. Whatever you say do, I'm willing to do it. I want to make this happen. I said, good. Take the car back. Take the car back. Take that vehicle. And wherever you purchased it from, or whoever financed it for you, take it, park it in their parking lot, hand them the keys, thank them for their time, and tell them it's been a great experience. But you're done. Your business is sitting outside of my parking lot. This is absolutely ridiculous. I said, you see this. You see this building. You see this academy. You see everything that I've done to bring this to fruition. You don't see my grandma's 07 Toyota Corolla that I drove around in in order to bring this to fruition. I had an Acura TSX. That was my dream car. That car was total in an accident on I-20. And instead of going and getting another one, I took that payment and I started putting that money aside so that I could bring this to fruition. So at this juncture, what you just told me is that I care more than you do. I can't help you. So when you're ready to rid yourself of that IP syndrome, then you come back and see me. Because it's not about you. It's not about your credit. 
because if your credit was that good, you wouldn't have almost a $500 car payment on a $15,000 car anyway. So your credit ain't that good. So your credit already shot. So I don't want to hear anything about ruining your credit. You don't want to take the car back because of your credit. No. Maybe your street cred. Maybe that. But at the end of the day, you're suffering from the IP syndrome. It's going to kill you dead if you don't get rid of it. Rid yourself of the IP syndrome. So I have a challenge for you guys. We're at the close. I have a challenge for you guys. Check yourself. See if you suffer from the IP syndrome. Something that's holding you back. Maybe others' opinion of yourself are trying to impress the masses. As long as you look good, got on fresh clothes, maxed out your credit card to do so, or still got tags in the back you're going to take back. But, you know, the way you look, the perception, as long as you look good and the people think you're doing good, especially as good as you look, then it's all good with you. That's a lie. The IP syndrome will kill you dead. Rid yourself of the IP syndrome. So that is my challenge to you guys on tonight. If you are contending with the IP syndrome, get rid of it now. Master the art of not caring. Don't care what people say. What they think or how they feel doesn't even matter. You have to rid yourself of the IP syndrome. Do it and do it now it's a good life the choice is yours rich perspectives this is the podcast 2018 we out